Have you ever been camping and you built a really big fire early on in the evening and it starts to sputter out a bit throughout the wee hours of the morning, but ultimately it was just enough to get you through the night? What's up Caps fans? Yeah, uh, that is pretty much what we had here in Pittsburgh as the Caps. They built a really big first period fire, came into Pittsburgh hot, they really did. Uh, they were cooking with gas throughout those first 20 minutes, jumped out to a four to nothing lead, and then held on for dear life, pretty much, throughout the last 40. Goals for the Caps. Tom Wilson got us started very early, in fact, uh, just 55 seconds in, actually. Um, and boy, do you ever love it. Just that little bit extra when he scores in Schittsburg, right? Uh, it just has that extra mwah, like it just has that extra oomph to it. But yeah, Willie, he absolutely snipes it, top corner, past Tristan Jari, assisted by Rasmus Sandin and Ethan Bear. That is Ethan Bear's first point as a Washington Capital. Congratulations to him. Uh, and so it is one to nothing for your Washington Capitals. Then Beck Malenstein, he's got his fourth of the season, uh, assisted by Nick Dowd. That fourth line has been incredible. Cannot say enough great things about them. Um, and so it is two to nothing for the Caps. And then less than two minutes after that, Martin Ferravari scores again for the Caps. He wanted to join the party. Marty party, let's get it going. Um, he jumps right in there. The Pittsburgh defenders, you know, they gave way too much space to a really good skater in Ferravari there, quite frankly. Um, and he makes them pay for it because of course he would. Um, he kind of ends up doing like a full circle of the entire Pittsburgh zone by the time all was said and done here. Um, and then he just fires it himself right to the back of the net. Um, that one is assisted by Dylan Strom and Hendricks Lapierre, and it is three to nothing for your Washington Capitals. Then, right as I'm thinking that all this game is missing right now, is a goal from Alex Ovechkin. Uh, literally, right as I was thinking that. In fact, I believe I even said that out loud. Boom, Ovi, he fires one straight to the back of the net, um, and it is four to nothing for your Washington Capitals. What a start. Ovi's goal was assisted by Rasmus Sandin, Sandin's second primary assist of the first period, and assisted as well by Anthony Mantha. And so this was the peak, right? That Ovechkin goal, the Capitals' fourth goal of the first period, that was the peak. That was the top of the mountain, that was the pinnacle, if you will. Because it was pretty much all downhill from there, as the Pittsburgh Penguins would storm back with three goals of their own to at least make it interesting. But you know what? I don't care. I don't. I don't care. And do you know why I don't care? Because we won, people. We won the hockey game. We got the two points. And we won it in regulation, which means that we didn't give the Penguins a point. And so if you ask me, which you didn't, uh, but if you were to ask me, I would tell you uh, that that should really be all that you care about right now. It really should. Um, because let me tell you something, like this is exactly the type of game. This is exactly, exactly the type of scenario that just last season under former head coach Peter Laviolette, you know, a huge divisional game, right? Um, against a big divisional rival with whom you were battling directly for playoff spots. You know, you jump out to a four to nothing lead in that game. Under Peter Laviolette last season, like, does anyone remember last season? Or have we just completely wiped that from our memories because it's too painful? Like, under Peter Laviolette last season, yeah, man, like, we're losing that game every time. So I'll take the win. Sue me. Like, seriously, this exact same scenario played out over and over and over and over again last season under Peter Laviolette. And we would lose that game every time. I mean, I shouldn't say that we would lose the game every time because it wasn't every time, but more times than not, like nine times out of 10, let's say, 
we would, can we all agree that at the very least under Peter Laviolette last season, if this game right here against the Pittsburgh Penguins, if this was playing out last season under Peter Laviolette, can we all agree that we would have at least let them tie it up and for them to take it to overtime and the Penguins would at least be getting a point? Can we all agree on that? Can we all agree that the Pittsburgh Penguins would at least have gotten the one point out of this game were this happening under Peter Laviolette last season? Like we did that over and over and over again with Peter Laviolette as our coach, especially last season. It's a big reason why we missed the playoffs last season because these types of scenarios where, you know, you're under the gun, the other team is pressing, things are getting dicey, and the Caps could not find a way out of it under Peter Laviolette. They would consistently let the other teams tie up the game. And like I said, at the very least, let the opposition get it to overtime to get the one point, which matters a lot in divisional games, by the way, to give them that one point. So, and, and like I said, more times than not under Peter Laviolette, they were letting the other team actually win that game. Not just get the one point, win the game and get the two points from us. So it happened over and over and over again last season. It was a big part, like I said, of why we missed the playoffs last season. And so you know what? Like you will excuse me if I don't totally freak out overseeing 4 nothing become 4-3. Like I'm, I'm, I'm just not going to do that. I'm not going to freak out over a 4 to nothing score becoming a 4-3 to three score because guess what? A 4 to nothing win is worth the same two points as a four to three win. And they're both in regulation, so who cares? Did it look pretty? No. Did we get the job done? Yes, that is what matters. Um, and, you know, it might seem weird that I'm not freaking out, but it's because we lived through last season, people. We have to remember that. I think sometimes it's easy to forget uh, because like I said, we kind of like block it out from our from our memories because it was, not fun, right? Um, but if you're wondering why I'm not freaking out over 4 nothing becoming 4-3, the reasoning for that is simple. It is because, like I said, they never let it become 4-4. And that is what matters. They stopped the bleeding, which was something that they never, ever, ever could do under Peter Laviolette last season. So that's all a long-winded way of saying that two points is two points. Put them in the bank. That's where they'll stay. Um, that's the story here for me. Like, if you want to hear bitching and moaning over a win, and a win in regulation at that, um, then you know what? You've come to the wrong channel. I'm sorry. You've come to the wrong channel. Big regulation W, okay? That's the story here. A couple of additional notes from the game. Uh, the shots at one point during the first period. I believe we're 10 to one in favor of the Caps. And if I'm remembering correctly, I believe the Caps had their third goal before Pittsburgh had even their second shot on net of this hockey game. So you can't ask for much better of a start than that, right? Um, and you could tell, you could tell. Like you could feel it that the Caps knew how important this game was for the standings. And they chased Tristan Jari from the Penguins net too, by the way. Um, Mike Sullivan pulled him after the third cap goal. And at the other end of the rink, Darcy Kemper. I thought he was up and down in this one. Like he was kind of, you know, um, but I will take that. I will take up and down over most of his recent starts where he has just been down, right? He's been just down recently. Um, and so... I will take it um, as ultimately today he did do enough for us to win the game, which is, of course, all that matters at the end of the day. But there were still some sketchy moments for him that I would really, really, really like to see him clean up sooner rather than later, please. Um, you know, for one, like basically the first real save that Kemper was asked to make in this game, uh, it was like a full 16 minutes into the game before he was asked to do anything, basically. Um, and still, that first real attempt by the Pittsburgh Penguins, he lets it squirt through his legs. And so it's just sitting there, like right near the goal line. And he doesn't have a clue, right? Like he does not have a fucking clue where that puck is. Um, so 
Martin Ferrari, he has to come in and make that save, you know, sweeping it off of the goal line and tucking it back underneath his clueless netminder for the whistle. So it doesn't go in this time, right? Um, but that is a play that certainly, like those are the ones that I really want him to just clean up, just clean them up, right? Because even though it didn't go in this time, it didn't hurt us this time because Faravari came in and saved the day, right? Um, but even though it didn't go in this time, it can very easily go in the next time. And there were some issues, let's call it, with some long range shots once again. Um, you know, like first he actually let in a pretty shitty goal. Um, again, it's another long range shot along the ice from the fucking blue line. You guys know how much I hate those ones. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was very, very clearly offside before that. Um, I actually called it live and I had said as the play was still going on that like, you know, this whole possession in the offensive zone here is all offside for the Penguins. Um, so I was kind of laughing about it. You know, I was like, even if they're, even if they're going to score here, it's not going to count. Um, so I wasn't too worried about it, but to me, the concerning thing, the part that does worry you, even if you weren't worried that the goal was going to actually count, the part that does worry you, the concerning thing is seeing another puck, whether it ultimately counts on the scoreboard or not, it's seeing another puck beating Darcy Kemper along the ice from the blue line. And so the Caps do challenge the goal for offside, uh, and rightfully so, like it was totally offside. Um, and so the goal gets called back, uh, like I said, rightfully so, on the coach's challenge for offside. It was very nice to see a coach's challenge actually going our way, um, as we have not had very good luck. You can't even call it luck. It's not luck, right? Um, but we have not had good results, let's say, on coaches' challenges this season. Um, and the Caps themselves have not issued very many coaches' challenges at all this season. Like, they have not issued a lot of coaches' challenges at all. Um, when I say that we haven't had any results from them, um, any good results, rather, uh, it's been, like, it's been the opposition it's been the teams that we're playing against, right? Who are issuing coaches challenges on some of our goals and all of those calls have been going against us. So um, it was very nice to see this one go our way uh, as it should have. Like I said, it was totally offside, but that really hasn't seemed to mean anything at all so far this season, at least in games that the Caps are involved in. Like we have seen a lot of Capitals goals called back already this season for shit that was just ridiculous, like should not have been called back, whether it be offside, whether it be goal interference. Um, we've had a ton of goals called back where, you know, it seemed pretty obvious that the goal was going to stand and then we get it wiped right off the board, right? Um, taken away from us. So we have not had good results so far this season with the coaches challenges. It was nice to, to see this one go our way for sure. Um, and like I said, rightfully so, ultimately, um, as it was totally offside, I could see that from my coach. So, um, however, the point of all this was to say that I still do want Darcy Kemper to make that save, whether the goal was going to count or not. Because even if you as a player think that it was offside and you think that it is going to be called back for offside should they score, you still don't know that for sure though, right? Like you don't know that. Like we have had so many, like I said, blatantly obvious calls go against us this season that you can't possibly know that for sure, right? Um, so make the save. Be on the safe side, make the save, right? Because we don't know what's going to happen with these coaches' challenges. Um, and that wasn't the only long range goal that Kemper would give up on the night um, as the Pittsburgh Penguins, their first goal that they scored that actually counted um, was also a long range blue line goal. And it came with four fucking seconds left on the clock in the first period. And to me, like, come on, Kemps, come on, buddy, come on. Um, that is one that you have got to have. Like if we're being honest here, that goal is what really kicked off this whole Pittsburgh Penguins comeback effort, right? Um, four seconds left in the period. It gave them life when they had absolutely none prior. 
Um, it's just not necessary. Like make the save. Like your team did not ask you to do fucking anything all period, man. Make the save. But yeah, I mean, like I said, Kemper was more good than bad in this game for once lately. Uh, just kidding. No, I'm not. Um, anyways, he gave us a chance to win the game today, uh, which is really all that you can ask for today. And he did that today. So for today, it's good, right? Um, it's just those long range goals though, man. Like they, they drive me absolutely nuts. They really do. Anyways, last note for today. Uh, I just wanted to show some love to Martin Ferravari in pointing out just how absolutely huge he was for us in this game. Um, his return to the lineup after missing some games due to injury could not have come at a better time for the Caps as I actually don't think that we win this game today without him. I really don't. Like, I mean, obviously, you know, he scored a big goal to make it three to nothing. Um, but even outside of that, like even outside of the stuff that shows up on the score sheet, like he just brings so many other important things to the table other than just the scoring. Like he threw a game high six hits. He was a beast. Um, he blocked a game high four shots. And obviously, like he made that save for Darcy Kemper on the goal line as well that definitely saved a Penguins goal. Um, you know, it ends up being a one goal win and Marty Ferrari factored into that in a lot of ways. Um, so like I said, I really don't think that we win that game without him. Uh, so it is really, really great to have him back. He was great today. He's always great. Amazing player for the Washington Capitals. Cannot believe that this guy is this good and this young and we have him locked up at this cheap of a contract. It's a little bit insane. All right, Caps fans, that is it for this one. Thank you all so, so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to hit that like button down below. If you really enjoyed the video, then please click on that subscribe button for me as well. And until next time, babes, and as always, let's go Caps.